Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Q&A, Q&A number 232, we're doing an even number this time, with us, the British List. Catching. With Stone Cold NJ. What's up? And me, the, uh, uh, apparently, uh, the Metallica-loving Mr. Parkin. Yeah, making up new names as we go along. If you have any questions, please, 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 as these people have done here, put them in the comment section below. We'll answer them as soon as possible. Waiting time may be a couple of months. Who knows? It's just the way it seems to work around here. Let's get straight into this Q&A. We're going to continue this Q&A from the last one where we were continuing to answer Attila Getzi's questions and we actually missed a few. So we're going to answer them all here. Apologies for that, Attila, like I said in the last Q&A. Do you think GFW will be able to get a TV deal? And if so, do you think the ratings will be higher than TNA? I think with uh, Jarrett's mind in the world of wrestling, I'm sure at some point he'll have contacts to mm. get him on a TV station. But while he's building himself up, maybe not yet. Well, I mean, I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if he got a TV deal. But as for the ratings being higher than TNA, I, I doubt that. It depends what channel he gets on. And, you know, GFW has only been around for like a year and a bit. So you know, it's going to take a while to build up brand awareness, whereas TNA have been around 10 years. I know their ratings ain't great, but at least they've been around. At least people know about them. I'm going to, you know, disagree with you. <laughs> As you do always. GFW could beat TNA's ratings if they go off air. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, technically speaking, TNA would have no viewers. So you are right. Yeah. But... GFW is essentially TNA because they're just getting all TNA's talent. Pretty much. So is, is it any different to TNA? I don't think so. No. Do you think Undertaker and Brock Lesnar should have one more match? Well, I mean SummerSlam. Well, after WrestleMania, I didn't think they should have one no. more match. But after SummerSlam, they kind of had to. They could not leave it like that. And they ended up having one ahead of the cell. But, I mean, after the SummerSlam finish, I mean, obviously, they had to have another match because they had to end the, they had to end the feud clean. So I would have said, yes, they have to have one more match, even though I didn't particularly want to see it. Yes, I agree. We've said this multiple times. WrestleMania should have been the finish. If they were to push it one more match, SummerSlam takes revenge. I don't see why Take could not have won and finished it there. But then they push it again because they did that finish. Hen Cell, yeah, it's a big blockbuster match, but they had to have a blockbuster setting Hen Cell match due to the pay-per-view be called Hen Cell. And they didn't really have any other selling points to show either. So, I mean, what are you going to do? Hi highlight the pay-per-view? Roman Reigns versus Bar Bray Wyatt? Oh, Kane versus Seth Rollins? Sound like great fucking matches to me. <laughs> Not really. Uh, is WWE very biased towards Americans? For instance, when it comes to voting like Tough Enough, it's only the Americans that get the vote. It's more like the WWE American universe. Well... They are based in the United States of America, so I can kind of understand that. I mean, the ratings are essentially all Americans, I believe. It's not, it's not, I mean, they have a domestic rating and then an international rating, I believe. I think and then the, a DDR rating and then loads of other ratings. I think the biggest evidence of this is when was the last time we had a British champion? Well, what, in WWE? Never. It's never happened. No, Magnus in TNA. And spoiler alert, GFW. But that, that's that's really it. Um, Thanks, I, WWE. I mean, I can understand why they want to stick in America with regards to voting. But I mean, with regards to voting on like the WWE app, that's worldwide. I mean, the WWE app is worldwide. Well, it's meant to be, you know, the app is worldwide. But the WWE, I'm sure, get their last say in the app results and stuff. Oh, no, no doubt they do. But I mean... They do favour Americans and they are biased towards Americans. No doubt. I mean, how many, how many like foreign heels have you seen? Like, you know, whenever they bring in a British guy or a foreign guy, they're always a fucking heel. Yeah, I can't think of it. Can you remember the last time? I mean, apart from Sheamus, maybe, and he wasn't exactly a good baby face. Do you know what I mean? That's just, I mean, but you can't. I mean, in America, British people are always bad guys. That's just how they. That's just how they're seen in in Britain. Always, Americans come across as badasses in movies because we're so used to the tiffy taffy way of the UK that the way the Americans do it, they don't drink fucking tea. No, That's no. all I'll say. Out of no. stupidly designed cups that are like the totally wrong shape. They Who are, does yeah. that fucking remind you of? Hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Terminator NJ is the answer to that question. Michael Murray, do you think Kevin Owens could be the new CM Punk or could he reach that potential? 
The only reason CM Punk reached the level that he did was because he had that star-making performance with that pipe bomb promo. If it wasn't for that, he probably would have left the company and would or would still be in the mid card. Can I see Kevin Owens doing that? I think he has the talent to, but I don't think WWE will give him the platform to be able to do that. And that's why I don't think Kevin Owens will get anywhere near being a CM Punk, even though he is somewhat of a similar character in a way, especially if you look at his work in ROH, where he was basically holding the company to ransom. As much as I'm going to agree with you, the only thing I'm going to say is that they've, they've you know, changed the history of AJ Lee. I wouldn't be surprised if they try and do something that writes CM Punk up a little bit. What you mean, like saying Kevin Owens did the original pipe bomb? They could in do ROH that, you know. They could make a new pipe bomb and try and outdo CM Punk. Yeah, AJ. but as for reaching the potential of CM Punk, no. Because... I, I, again, Owens came from an independent wrestling promotion. I know CM Punk did as well, but CM Punk broke through that barrier with that pipe bomb promo, and I don't see Kevin Owens doing that. He's, he's good. Like I he's good. See, no I'm, doubt. Like when he did that, we were talk about ROH. He did that great, you know, tennis racket thing. Always. Uh, oh yeah, in ROH, brilliant. He, that was the only he, reason we watched. If he brings the powerful mic, work, if the WWE let him to the WWE and try and outdo Punk. I'd like to see it, because I think Kevin Owens has the ability to, which is if the WWE are going to push him to do that. It's a very strange world, isn't it, the wrestling world? Anyway, Renegade Man 83. Do you think the Usos at some point could branch off a singles competitor similar to the Hardys? No. I, I don't ever think they'll be singles competitors. I, I just... I just don't see how it would work. They're just so much better as a tag team, especially seeing as they are twins. When I, was the last time you saw twins in like in, in singles competitive singles competitive action? I was just trying to think. I bet your I bet your viewers are gonna point up someone. Yeah, well they probably got Wikipedia at the moment. <laughs> we haven't. Uh, speaking Usos. of that, let's get Wikipedia now, I'm joking. Go on. I, I think it's like, in my opinion, what they did to the Wyatt family. You saw two people and you may see one's better than the other. Or you're thinking, well, let's try breaking them up. The Usos are a bit like the White Family. You should not break no. them up because they are, like, solid together and you can't really see them doing anything more than what they've been doing now. Well, the, the difference with the Hardys is, is that you saw Jeff Hardy being something in the WWE. Not necessarily a main eventer at the time, but you saw that fans were having a massive connection with Jeff Hardy, True. especially women and young kids. So you, so from that, you knew that WWE would try and do something with Jeff Hardy. Whereas, where have we got that with Jay and Jimmy Uso? Ne never. There's never been that, like, I'd love to see one. Of, I'd love to see Jimmy Uso go out on this. I mean, to be honest, if both of them were in singles competition, there was no name. I wouldn't know which one it was. Just saying. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere down the line the WWE try to turn one face, other one heel, and they do it because the WWE seem to like that aspect. Mm. But I wouldn't recommend it. Do you like Matt Hardy's version one gimmick? Oh yeah, with the I, TV and, and the TV. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, at the time yeah. to make him stand out, yes, that was a pretty good gimmick, but it didn't really get him anywhere. Turn only more. really, only really got him. Like a solid mid card place position, which isn't bad, is considering all the talent WWE had back then. But and then he has Shannon. Did he have Shannon yeah, Moore in his saying. corner? And they did try something with Matt Hardy, but it just it was MVP, never gonna oh. it was never gonna go anywhere. I mean, MVP was probably the best he got as a singles competitor, really. Wasn't well, he had that feud with Jeff Hardy, but I think it was after version one. Yeah, but like the thing is with feuding with a, a brother, you know, it's it was a good feud, but didn't really do anything for Matt, did it? He went at WrestleMania, but after that, no, it had to get exactly. back to Jeff. Exactly. Do you think TNA made a bad decision on not putting the NWA belt on Monty Brown instead of keeping the belt on Jeff Jarrett? <laughs> Any time they could have got the belt off Jeff Jarrett would have been a good one, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, we all know we all know about Jeff Jarrett. He had to be the face of the company, and he had to be the champion. You know, and a guy like Monty Brown, who who ended up being Marcus Corbon in WWE, as we'll answer in the next question, he had the look. You know, he had a real look of a guy that could be the top guy in the promotion. Yeah, yeah and, but, but instead of him winning the belt, which probably would have been a great idea, let's have Jeff fucking Jarrett win the belt. Fucking guy who's five years too late winning a fucking world title. Again, we everyone could play that Jeff Jarrett due to when, when it comes to his booking, oh. it has to go in his favour. Oh, it's just, I mean, you've got TNA. Yes, it's a small brand at the time. 
And Jeff Jarrett's probably thinking, well, I'm a name. Yeah, I can be the champion. And yes, maybe in the early 2000s, that would have been the case, but not 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. Not 2011 when you're still feuding with fucking Kurt Angle. Or 15. Or 15 when he's won the main event of fucking Slammiversary. <laughs> God's sake. And as for Marcus Corbin in WWE, again, the guy looked a million dollars, but the WWE never... I mean, was he part of the ECW brand? He was like the new breed or yes, something? Yes, and yes, And what, what did WWE actually do with him? They didn't do anything with the guy. You know, it's a shame. I mean, Terrible. It's, it's, Terrible I mean, it's amazing how much talent goes through WWE. What, what, and what color was he? I, you know, I, th- I think he was black. Yeah, yeah, good, great question there, NJ. Great question. Mm, yes, mm, I think mm, he was black. Yeah, mm, mm, yeah. Not, mm. not saying anything, no. but there you go. Yeah. Ebro S. Oh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Simply because I actually don't know one of these YouTubers. What do you think of these IWC guys? Enter the arena, US. The uh, I've never heard of him. Party. Unfortunately, I don't go on YouTube that much anymore. I only listen to a few specific channels. So enter the arena USA, I believe that's the name. I'm sorry, I've, I've never I've never heard of it. No disrespect. Sorry. I just haven't seen your channel around. The voice of reason. Wrestling Jesus. No, 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 I mean no, the voice of reason isn't wrestling. Oh, two Jesus. separate. Okay. They're two separate ones. The voice of reason again. I've I've not heard that channel. I believe if that is a channel, I I've not heard it. I do apologise. For all I know, the guy might be fifteen thousand subscribers, or girl <laughs> might have be fifteen thousand subscribers, and I I just haven't come across the channel. No disrespect. Uh, Wrestling Jesus slash Cedric did a pretty bad interpretation of us. I mean, when was the last time I walked out on a Raw and said yeah. I would, and said I would, you know, and, and said I'll never watch this again, and I will never ever ever watch this again, and I will. Oh, I'm here for the Raw review. But I just want to say, whoever's friend that was of Wrestling Jesus, the impression of you was pretty good. I thought, and I think you think so too. I'm Terminator NJ. But the impression of me was awful because the guy didn't even have a British accent. But, if you're gonna do it, have a British accent. Don't don't say, oh, hello there. I am Daniel Parkin of the British Fist. Have a British accent, you fool. But what I'll say about him so much is that I think he, I, I give him, he makes me laugh sometimes. I think he does, you know, pay his part in the YWC. But the only thing is. Why get involved in drama? You know, drama, you know. Yeah, drama. just why don't you just stick to making wrestling videos Jesus. rather than drama wrestling, Jesus? I've never understood your motivation there to try and rip other YouTubers. Not once have I found that funny. Till next time. <laughs> this... Peace. <laughs> hey there, <laughs> wrestling Jesus. <laughs> Fuck you. Fucking pathetic. <laughs> I mean, the guy, the guy is quite funny. Yeah. The impression of me was awful though. It's only because his friend did it. It was fucking awful. Uh, OCRS Central. Who? Uh, I think that's off the rope show. Next. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, we we became good friends with uh, a lot of the guys off the off the off the rope show. Who was show. in that group? Oh well, you had the Schleg Daddy. Oh, uh, of course, course, you know, of course, course yeah, the yeah, Schleg Daddy. I mean, who, I, mean, I mean, who? I mean, who doesn't know? I mean, he's got a fucking ego about that big. Oh yeah. Um, uh, Mike Ralph, I miss talking to. I miss talking to Mr. Ralph. He was awesome. Tasteless Tony T was the one that gave us the idea for the British Fist. You had B Rad. Silent Mark. Exactly. You no, Silent Mark. You believe marvelous Mark, more like. He was awesome. I remember talking to him a few times. Brilliant guy. So I mean, a lot of the OGRS guys, we're very good friends with. I, one thing I'll say about OTRS Central is whenever I see the video pop up, no matter what it is, it can be football, it can be politics, I have to watch it. Don't know why, I just do. And I'll people, say, people think I'm a, a schleg daddy whore or something, I don't know. Well, here's my little twist. As much as he's another person who's, you know, always out there with videos, but the bad thing is I could see Jeff doing what... Mr. Parker did. I think he's complaining his love for wrestling's damaged and breaking down. Jeff, I really think that not a break or whatever, I think, you know, it's damaged too much now. Well, I'll say this. We haven't seen a video from Jeff in a few weeks as of this recording. Um, so maybe he is taking a break. And I think I think Jeff, to be honest with you, definitely needs a break from the shit that he's done, especially at this time of year where it's usually crap. Uh, the Brad Rules... I have watched this channel a few times, and all I can say is that, I mean, the guy gets a lot of views, uh, and he uses, like, capital letters in his titles a lot, like, this is fucking shit and stuff like that, which, I mean, 
we did a few times because, well, you know. Rant! Yeah, rant, exactly. Raw rant. Uh, but the guy moans too much. I mean, come on. Have a bit of a laugh, dude. You seem like you're a little <laughs> bit tense. John Cena one. John Cena uh, one. John Cena. <laughs> it's fucking pathetic. <laughs> I mean, uh, basically, all I'll say about the Brad rules is that, like, I've only watched a few of his videos, but he seems like he wants to be wrestling Jesus. That, that, that's that's what I get from it. No disrespect. That is actually a very respectful comment because wrestling Jesus is quite a big YouTuber, believe it or not. But he seems like he wants to be wrestling Jesus to me, but he does reviews that are fucking pathetic. And the last name? <laughs> No, no, no. The best yeah. one. Yeah. We got the best. We saved the best one for last. British Fist. What do we think of British Fist? I miss well, the, well, the one thing I can say about the British Fist is it's been a good ride, but it's got to the point where the ride has kind of died a little bit, hasn't it? I encourage a lot of many YouTubers right now. That's why I mentioned Off the Rope Show. We've cut down hardly doing any if doing any videos because of our love and enthusiasm enthusiasm for the wwe and wrestling in general yeah i mean but at the end of the day it just got to a point where it, it just yeah it, it was just too much especially for myself i know nj you still watch it every right, then, but it got to the point with me where i just couldn't do it anymore i couldn't watch wwe you know, things move on, you know, you have a, you know, we, we both have jobs, you know, I've got a, I've got a girlfriend now and stuff like that. and it just, you, you don't find time for these kind of things anymore. Oh, what you, what's that, tie in the knot? Kissing, you know. You, oh, I thought, I thought that was like tie in the knot, as if you're implying I was getting married or something, that ain't happening anytime soon. Oh. And like, I think with you, it was interesting because I know you've been watching WWE since like the 90s. <sighs> and when you turned around to me and said, I can't watch wrestling anymore. I can't watch WWE anymore, anywhere near what I used to be. I was thinking, well, it must be bad. That's what came, That's the first thing that I thought to myself when you said, I can't watch this anymore. It must be fucking bad. Thank God I'm not watching it anymore. To be honest, I'm glad I'm not watching it anymore. The thing is, as much as I can say I can totally understand why you're not watching anymore, the thing is, the British Fist was absolutely... I'm still hearing compliments of what we used yeah. to do. I used to really love doing it as well. But oh. it just got to a point where, you know, number one, I couldn't stay up until four in the morning anymore because five sometimes. or five sometimes or sometimes even six, just couldn't do it. And then it got to the point where I just couldn't watch Raw anymore. Three hours was too much for me. And I know you tried and you watched TNA as well. And I don't know how the fuck you did it. And the tipping point for me was when like my NXT reviews that I enjoyed so much just weren't, they were getting like 100, 200 views per video. And I was just like, you know, I, What's the point? I mean, we're not earning much money from it at all now. We're, we're earning little to no money from the channel, which we were earning a little, we were earning quite a lot before. And I think I think me and you just, we had just some better things to do, didn't we? But these Q&As, I've sort of kept the channel together somewhat, and we still do these. And then, you know, this is, I enjoy doing the Q&As because they're quite simple to do. And we get, and I think one of the most important things about YouTube, I mean, even though we, we get barely any views for these Q&As anymore, is the interaction with the people that are watching the videos. You know, I've said this multiple times. There's been times where I've tried to at least come up with ways of reuniting us. But as much as I personally miss all the skits, all the comedy hard work we did, like I've re-uploaded some special videos that you've done on your Guess road. The superstars. And all this stuff that made us stand out, made us special, entertained you. I personally miss it. I think that, yes, we'll be complaining now if we were still doing war reviews. Oh, but yeah. what we'd be bringing to our videos again, I think, would have been special and great. But mm. I think it's going to be really, really, really difficult to bring us back. Oh, big time. I mean, I, I, I don't want to do it again. I think it's got it's got past the point now where I would even consider doing it again, unfortunately. It's just the way life pans out sometimes, in my opinion. And the last question is, what are your thoughts on the closing down of the Wrestling Gurus channel? I didn't even realise it closed down. I've been speaking to him a little bit, one of the members. Who? Which member? Can you not say? I can't remember the name. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's good friends. Oh, uh, he's good friends with... Uh, in the rope show and I haven't I've only recently started speaking to him and to be honest I've heard the story of why they broke up a bit like us through further apart you know 
we started to lose interest and we had own lives to create it. So it's sad, I'm going to say this, but again, it comes down to live kicks in. Yeah, that's essentially, and you know, at the end of the day, YouTube is, you know, YouTube's fun, but sometimes like, you know, like what's happened to me and in some, and in some cases, NJ mm. as well, you know, life has to come first sometimes. That's just, that's just the way it is, especially when you're like us and you're in your mid to late twenties, you have to start doing a bit of growing up, don't you? I know I fucking well have to. I still need to get out of wearing Metallica shirts. But anyway, that's been it from the British Fist with this Q&A, unless you have some words. We've got to end on a negative note. No, well, no. NJ, look at, look at it, NJ. We're talking about wrestling. It's always going to end on a negative note. There we go. Well, I was thinking about singing, but okay, that that, that works. Uh, that's been another Q&A from us, the British Fist. God, Ending on a very happy note there. Hopefully we'll begin the next one on a happy note when we say hello to you guys. But bye for now.